Welcome to Lesson 5, Tutorial 1 of our Python Total Series. In this particular tutorial, we're going to look at conditionals and how we can use those in Python. Now, if we look back at the code that we did in our last tutorial, where we've actually just run this code and we can ask how many sides, so we can say I want four sides and I want the sides to be 200 long and it will draw my little um, square. But the problem we've got, what happens if you don't actually enter in a number? What happens if you enter some other value in? So I'm just going to stop that, run it again, and instead I'm going to type dog. Oh, and I get this error here. So you'll see the error down here, um, invalid literal for int where base 10 dog. And basically the problem is, is that I have not entered a number in. So what I want to do is I want to see if there's some way that I can actually check that. And to do that, we use conditionals, or otherwise known in Python as if statements. So, I'm going to just put an example here, totally new one. If I say user value, and if I have that equal to input enter number, right? And then if I just say print, um, user value and if I just run that it's just going to parrot back whatever I put in so I'm going to say 10 and it'll parrot back 10 I'm just going to put a space there or I can say dog and it will parrot back dog but I want to know whether or not this is actually a number now there's a really cool little thing in Python um, in relation to strings because these are currently strings that's what input inverts in and we'll talk about data types at a later point but there's a simple way I can test it by using a method called dot is digit and it will tell me whether or not the value that I've put in the user value in is a digit so I'm going to run that again and I'm going to say 10 and it says yeah true it's a digit which is is but if I then run and instead I say dog, it's going to say false and it's not a digit. So how can I use that to help me prevent people from putting wrong values in on the, for the number of sides or for the length of the sides? Well, that's where I introduce this concept of if statements. So instead of saying, you see what the value here, which is saying user value, an if statement starts with if, and it has what we call condition in here. So this is a test that you do that will result in either a true or a false value. We have this little condition here, this little test here, which gives us either the value of false or true. So I can just use that. So I'm going to cut that out, and I'm going to put that in here. And now I can say, okay, if whatever, whatever value is, if it is a digit, I want it to do something. So I'm going to say, if this is a digit, See, I've got the colon at the end here, which means all this stuff is indented. Um, so if it is a digit, I'm going to do whatever's indented in here. So the indent I'm going to basically say is, yes, that is a digit. I'm going to run that. And I'm going to say 10. So yes, that is a digit. Awesome. So I've now got a way of knowing if it's a digit. But what if it's... What if I want it to be one or two options? So basically, this code in here is only ever going to run if this is a digit. So that's an if statement. Now we can add an extra part at the bottom here called an else statement, which will run if this is not true, if that condition is not true. So if the condition is not true, I need to be able to say something along the lines of, um, silly, that is not a number. So I enter that in, and I press play, and if I run, I put 10 in, and again, it's going to say, yes, that's a digit. But if I run it again, if I type dog, it's going to say, silly, that's not a number. Because it comes down here, and let's actually step through. I'm going to debug this so we can see. So it's getting the value from the user here. Use input comes up, and if I say 10, enter, user value is going to be 10, steps through and it says 10 is 10 a digit that's true so therefore i do that line of code right now and it's finished if i run that again and i put in a 
different. Oh, wait, if I debug it again, and then we step through, and ask me to put a value in, I put dog in, enter, and then go through, dog is dog in a digit, false, so therefore it runs the else component and puts that through and prints that out. Now it's worthwhile noting down the bottom here, once we go outside the indent, we bring the indentation level out to the same as the if, this is the code that will run once either of those two branches have been passed. So if I can say here, print um, you may continue and close that. And if I run that again, put 10 in, it says, yes, that's a number. So it runs this here. It skips this part because this is this value is true, true. The condition is true. It skips the else section and then it runs the code that's down here. So that is an if and an if else statement. So if I come back here now to this code, I can change this code. And where I've got, um, where I've got here sides, I can test sides. So I'm just gonna put a little comment up here first and have this get user input. So I've got size. Now before I change it, so this is the problem here is that we're trying to change the error comes up, if I put dog in here, the error comes up and it says, I'm trying to change dog into a number, which I can't do because it's not a digit. So I'm gonna get rid of the ints of here, right here, and then I'm gonna come in here and say, right, um, if um, sides is digit, Oh, it should be sides, don't um, is digit. So if that is a digit, then what I want to do is say sides is the integer version of sides. And if it's not a digit, if they've entered anything else other than a digit, I'm going to say um, print invalid input and then I'm going to quit the program so it doesn't do anything else. Okay, so that's my little test here. So let's try that now. So if I come into here, oops, and if I run this program, it pops up. How many sides? If I say dog, it says, oh, that's an invalid input, I'm finished. But if I did actually run it properly and I put in um, five sides, and how long are the sides? I'm gonna make them 20. It will draw it and it works fine. Okay, so we need to put the same test as well for the length. So um, that's gonna prevent the errors for the lengths here. So I'm gonna come down and do the exact same thing. Oops. So I'm gonna change length equals, get rid of the int in here. And then I'm gonna say if uh, length dot is digit colon and then I say therefore if that's the case then length equals the integer of length um, and then the else I can just copy this down here so I've done that and if I go run I can now, all the sides has worked, so here, I'm just gonna test um, um, uh, how long the sides are. So again, I'm gonna put a non-number in, dog, and yep, it says invalid input, and the program ends. Or, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna be 30 sides, and I want each one to be um, uh, 10 long. And there we go, it works that way as well. So. We've got the situation there that I have tested and I've worked it out that way. So, so I've done that, we've done that working through that way, but the thing is, uh, does our code pass the dry test? So let's have a look here. I've got a bit of repetition that's going on here. So instead, I'm gonna change this. Let's see what the repetition is. So these values change, the input 
the prompt changes, so there's something you could change here, but the rest of the structure and the actual variables are all pretty much the same. So I'm going to bring up here and make a new function instead, which is going to be called get number. Okay? And the get number is going to receive a prompt because the actual prompt that goes out to the user input, it changes between the two. I have to have two different statements. You can see how long the sides, how long, etc. And then in here, I'm going to get a um, number from the user. Okay, and what I'm what the actual message is going to put up on the screen is going to be whatever gets passed in to this function from outside from the main program equals that. Now I'm going to test it. So if num dot is um, is digit. So again, if this is, then what we're going to do is we're going to return the integer of that number. Um, else, and we're just going to do the same here, print invalid and quit. Oops, and tab you out. Okay, so if it comes in, it will get this prompt when I call it. Uh, we'll say whatever the prompt is, it will actually put that up on the screen. And if it is actually a number, it will return the value back to the main program. Otherwise, we just quit the program if it's not. So here, I have to now say, instead of saying size and all this other stuff, I can say sides get number. The prompt that I want to send is this. Oops. Okay, so that one now gets sent up and I can do the same for length. Right, so you'll see I've actually done that. I'll put the repetition up to here. Let's just run it, make sure it works. How many sides? I still want it to be, let's say seven sides. How long are the sides? The sides are going to be 100. Yep, okay, that works. Um, and what happens if I put another value in, a different value? How many sides? Dog, invalid input, quits out of the program. So that works all fine. Now, if you're not really sure how that's working, if you're a bit confused about it, make sure that you just debug it debug using F7 or this one here, step into, just to go through and actually see the full process so you can follow the full process. So there we are, we've gone through and we've now used is and else to, um, to create a, a protection to make sure that the values are, um, the values are going to be numbers that we're actually converting. So the if and else has another component to it called elif, um, which is another part of this whole statement structure. Um, to introduce that, we're going to look at the concept of maybe what happens if we actually want to provide a color for um, our shape rather than it just being the shape um, without, with just an outline in the white middle there. So the first off, I'm going to change our actual polygon so I can choose the color that goes in here. So I'm going to put color there. And then we're going to change Fred, our turtle's color. Uh, the outline is still going to remain black. That's fine. But whatever the actual fill is, the fill color is going to be whatever gets passed in. Um, and then I need to say Fred. And I say begin fill. And open close and then I come down here and I say Fred um, end fill open close so now when I call in draw poly up here to draw the actual shape if I now add a color at the end we can see that if I choose uh, four sides and then five sides it's going to well I have to make it a little bit bigger would have been useful let's try it again it's going to be um, five and 100 you can see that it actually makes the fill that color so that's cool but what we want to do is actually want to change it so instead of it just being a default value that we actually get the user to choose a particular color 
So that's where we're going to use the else if. And I'm just going to start straight out with making a new function to get the color value. So again, we're getting user input. We're going to say side and length. And the fill, just as we did with the get numbers, the fill is going to be get um, color. No send a prompt there because there's only one possible one. Right, so we're going to say get color, and I'm going to make a function up here called get color. And in here, we're going to say a prompt, and I'm just going to give them three to choose from. Okay, so color equals input, and I'm going to say fill color. Um, choose red blue or green okay question mark prompt there now I'm going to put an extra thing because this is going to come in as a string and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it so the string is all lowercase so it doesn't matter if they put capital reds or capital blues or capital B with uh, lowercase l u e it's just going to become all lowercase so now I can test it. I can say if color equals red, I can say return color. And um, L if, now this is the next change. Instead of saying else, which would be, I could say else, um, and I can do the same thing and say um, print in valid input and then I could quit just the same as I did with the letters with the numbers but I wanted the other colors this is just going to check red so I could do another test here which is elif right and then I could put another conditional test in here if elif color equals blue then I can say return color and elif color equals green um, colon I can again return color so what's going to happen and we will step through this um, what's going to happen is Let's run it and debug it and see how it goes. So I come into and down here, instead of saying red, I need to also then say fill. So it's going to, the program's going to come down, it's going to say fill, okay, get color. So to get color, it runs this here, it puts that comment up on the um, terminal. The user will give you value back. And that value then gets converted to all lowercase letters. Just checks whether it's, if it's red, it will say, yep, yeah, return the value of red. If it's blue, it will return blue. If it's green, it will return green. Um, otherwise, it's going to say invalid input and it's going to quit. So let's see if that works. Run. Oh, what have I done here? Color input. Oh, I forgot to close my string off. There, that's better. Let's try that. Get rid of assistant. And how many sides? I'm going to say eight sides. How long are the sides? 200. What color? Green. And it's off the screen, but it's there, and you can see that it's done the green. Okay, let's check and see if it works as something else. How many sides? Four. 100. Um, if I say dog, what does it do? Invalid input because dog is not one of the three tests. Doesn't pass this test, this test, or this test. Again, if you want to check and understand the nitty gritty of it, debug it, go through and go point by point by point uh, using F7 to actually move forward or using this here, the step into to move through each particular point. Okay, so there we go in relation to using our if else and elif so um, you have exercises um, lesson five exercises one two and three that you can work on and apply this actual concept this structure to those um, questions that are in those exercises off you go